the fine art of collecting has to tell a story. If the things are expensive and they're all in the same room, that doesn't tell any story except about a banking account. Do not buy a bad painting by a great artist. What you really want to do is to buy the masterpiece of an unknown artist from an unknown school, which actually happens to be signed and dated, because that's going to give you great pleasure, and um, a bad Picasso won't. I'm Manfredi della Gerardesca. I grew up in Florence. As it happens, I was very interested in art. I think I went for the first time to the Uffizi when I was six. So I went basically from matchboxes and dinky toys to an interest for these kinds of things. I started working for uh, some of the greatest collectors in the world and buying some of the greatest things that came onto the market. The acquisition of collections for other people gave me at some point a little bit of a craving to collect myself. I grew up in a house where antiques were everywhere and uh, there were family antiques and there were things that my grandparents had collected, things that had been in the house for 300 years. There was a little bit of everything. And I think that my distinctive, I think distinctive eclecticism comes exactly from that. I think that what I have collected personally has always a background story. I tend to think of a project and buy for the project. Mixing is a careful art which comes from some kind of aesthetic. You can agree with it or you can not agree with it, but sometimes things go better than others and you walk into a place and you think, this really works. I bought this 1838 house, which is Georgian house on the brink of Victorian. So it really is a Victorian house with very big windows, but it's not a big house. So I probably slightly overstuffed it. I, I've never been a minimalist in my life. And this, this house is the living proof of it. It's really the expression of my taste. Everything is a little mental trip somewhere. I chose everything I wanted to live with and only the things I wanted to live with. There is a pair of Anglo-Indian chairs that I like very much. There are some French candlesticks that I like very much. I started noticing at auction these paintings, which are what's normally called a trompe l'oeil. What's curious about them is that they depict a prince. In this particular instance, I have one that reproduces a print by Chardin, and then there is one that reproduces a print after a Peter Lilly painting. And then there is something that probably is very close to Philippe de Champagne uh, crucifixion. Not only there is the effect of the broken glass, there is also a fly that's been painted in. The model of the Quibinar came into my life because I walked into an auction house in London. It was standing in the middle of a very large room, very prominently. It's a very recognizable building, built in 1193 by the first Sultan of Delhi. And I love the object itself. In some cases, I have things that are modern, but that reproduce um, things that are much older. For example, I have a pair of pheasants that are kanshi, they are supposed to be 18th century Chinese. And as a matter of fact, mine are probably made in Portugal, they are new. But the decor and um, the shapes and the firing of the, of the porcelain is almost identical. They sit very elegantly on the fireplace, even being modern and new. The advice that I would give to a young collector today is to always buy something they like because if in 10 years time is worth a tenth of what you paid for it, you still like it. I have a sort of form of counter snobbism. I like to like different things. So I go for minor things, which I think are of great quality, which I hang since the dawn of time in my house, so the things that have followed me. Uh, there is this painting, for example, which is the first, let's say, pre-1900 painting that I bought at auction. I bought it in Paris when I was sort of 20 or something. At 60, I still like that painting and I've had it for 40 years and it's been following me everywhere. But I bought it with conviction. I think you really have to have a feel for what you're getting. You can't just listen to other people, you have to look. I think you can apply that to Leonardo and you can apply that to prints that you buy on, on the sidewalk in Paris. And as long as they feel comfortable with, they should hang it in their living room. Because that is what they like. And that is the most important thing.